Speaker Jam. Salam. Om. Anubia Hira. Jabo Yakri. Haile Selassie and his son. And all Ja Child of Judah and Beth. Ja Eternal Seal of Ja Imperial Majesty of Anubi shall bear witness to all private and foreign matters of Anubia business agreement. Only Ja Child of Judah and Beth, named and chosen by Haile Selassie and his son, shall I see any of Ja Kabra and the God's royalty which shall be administered by Haile Selassie and his son. May Jabba Sephora attenually bless Aina. A faker of Sham, Jabba, Haile Selassie and his son. Jabba Sephora, Haile Selassie and his son. Jabba Sephora, This is Wendem Yadin, otherwise known as Ras Yadinos or Iodonis, if you please, to far right of the lineage of society of his imperial majesty. Moan, this is him, Negeda Yehuda Machibel. Now we're going to continue with uh, Shemot. Shemot is the Hebrew book of Exodus. And now this is a uh, a wiki uh, compilation right here um, because you see what's going on with the internet so a lot of knowledge moving to and fro and for some of them you know for some of them secret societies and the rest of these cats you know the rest of these dogs really you know they um they don't like that really too much but hey it's just the word of his imperial majesty and Christ that's being fulfilled now let's get a little better understanding and groundation on this, on Shemot. Once again, Shemot means the names. At Bamarinya, it's um, Simoch. It's, it's called Simoch, which if you look at the two, Shemot, Simoch, it's only a fool that can't see the correspondence between the language of the King of Kings and the so-called Masoretic Hebrew. Now this is, we're still in the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbath, studies or sabbatical scrolls number 13. Now we pointed this out before and we'll point this out again. This is 2012, right? And um, the 13th Sabbath is called Shemot, which this is, which is also a name of, the, of, of this particular um, study scroll and document available at www.lojsociety.org. We think it's a very vital study manual and document, but if one can't afford it, one can still, you know, utilize the internet. But this is good, at least it's in a book, because we can't trust, you know, when the internet will be on or offline. 
so we have to do we have to work while while the light shine while it's day while we have the opportunity so in this portion on Shemot we touched on the affliction you know the affliction the first portion of this is dealing with the affliction in Egypt now we've also sought to teach on the fact that this is spiritual Egypt revelation speaks on spiritual Egypt and that we are currently in spiritual Egypt this is a spiritual Egypt now if ones want to get a little more background like on DC and and America the Masons and so forth and so on please do so please do so because you need to know the truth in order to really have even the opportunity or the potentiality to free oneself and unfortunately too many have settled for lower expectations you know just just niggas you know being niggas and see niggas is a name too the, the, the word nigger and negro let's deal with the first part of the shimlo means a name but names in what what sense in what sense of the word these are the names so we learn right here in um, the second book of Moses called Exodus so we have our Scofield study Bible as well as the Metzhaf Kedus of Negus and Neges, so what we know as the book of the seven seals his majesty's revised and hard Bible which will um, Hitler to four refer to as the the Arab the Rab, or the revised and hard Bible the RAB but scripturally prophetically it's known as the book of the seven seals Revelation 5 5 concerning the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Moa and Bessas, Im and Negeda, Ainai, Godfather, and King of Kings, Kedamawi, Haila, Selassie. Now, Shemot refers to the names and it speaks of the 70 descendants, the 70 descendants of Yaakov, of Jacob, who came down to Egypt and how the Beta Israel were fruitful and how they felt the land according to Exodus chapter 1 verses 1 to 7 now Yosef or Joseph and all of his generation died so the older generation died now we see there's a correspondence just as we have Friday the 13th from the Western Gentile perspective um, corresponding with the 13th um, sabbatical reading and feeding or the Parashah, the Kufu, which is called Shemot. And this is the present Shemot. So the 13 and 13 clash, 2012. Now, we're not going to go into the apotheosis right now and deal with um, the 1,260 days. But for the Dekamez Amorit, for the disciples, please take down a little footnote right here of the 1260 days connection Mayan calendar December 21st uh, 2012 and Barack Obama there's a there's a very interesting and July 11th I think is 2000 and what was it 2009 July 11 2009 a very interesting significant date and people say there's a lot of correspondence with this because you recognize in Revelation it talks about either this this period of time some account it as 1260 days but we also can calculate that concerning the Lateran Treaty the Lateran Treaty is a particular treaty that was signed by Benito Mussolini and the Italian King Victor Emmanuel Victor Emmanuel with the Pope with the Roman um, Catholic Church in 1929 now this is one year after Rastafari became Negus Tafari or King Tafari and one year before he would sit upon the throne of his glory as King of Kings of Ethiopia and the 72 the 72 nations now 72 and the 73rd day of Barack Obama's presidency that was um, I think July 11th 2009 now there's a particular interesting correspondence going on with that some say well this is where it says about the seven years and then after three and a half years there is this um, catastrophic event according to the book of revelations now some say this corresponds with both the Mayan calendar December 21st 
2012, as well as something that Barack Obama said, as well as what occurred, some say, on that particular day, and where he had met with um, the present Pope, um, Pope uh, Benedicto or Benedict, you understand, the 16th. Now, there's a background to the Lateran Treaty, so we have to understand the Lateran Treaty, what occurred in the Lateran Treaty. So write down Lateran, L-A-T-E-R-A-N Treaty. Now, why is this important? Well, Revelation speaks of certain prophetic events that will occur in the last days and times of this Gentile world system that we know as white supremacy. Now, there's a whole bunch of talk on New World Order, Freemasons, so forth and so on. Now, we're moving into a time of a new age, point blank, period. Some people try to argue and debate it, but if you really study the facts for yourself, you recognize that all of this is beyond coincidence, that, yes, there were cycles, and we're moving into another cycle. This is why the so-called Illuminati, the Freemasons, the rest of them, and, the, and their new age movement, is trying to capitalize on it by all of the false propaganda and, and the various um, true and false mixed information that's being put out there as well. Now, people say, well, what's the connection with Shemot? First of all, let's deal with the names, the issue of the names. So Shemot means the names. Now, as we said, some might not get this. And we have to recognize that what sort of folks won't get this. And this is now connecting with who we are as a people and where we're at. We're in a spiritual Egypt, right? Let's understand this. We're in a spiritual Egypt. But what, what is our names? Right? What is our names? Popularly, the lost sheep. Let's write this right here. The lost sheep equals black Israel, right? The lost sheep equals black Israel, right? And the lost sheep is in spiritual Egypt. Now, the center of the spiritual Egypt, or one of the centers, a main center of the spiritual Egypt is D.C., or the District of Columbia. All right, they have an obelisk just like ancient Egypt. Remember, the obelisk was cracked. They're trying to repair. They're spending like what uh, one one Rubenstein gave seven million dollars, and Congress also going to give the same amount of money. So what, like fourteen million dollars to fix this satanic monument? It's a, it's a washetan. That's washetan. If you now look at it from the Eastern perspective, which is the biblical perspective, because the Bible comes from the East, and it concerns the story of the Beta Israel, who are now the lost sheep, or black Israel. But black Israel don't want to recognize its name. True? True. So the, when we look at the names here in this portion of Shimo, it discusses this. Is, now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Then it lists them. Bamarinya, Yaakov Agar, Wadagibut, Yagabut, Israel, Jocha, Simoch, Inezi, Nacho. Now it tells us exactly what these patriarchal heads of the, tw what the patriarchs. So let's understand that too, the patriarchs. So now when we put this into significance with us, Currently, where we're at in 2012, we see the march, right, on Washington, right, on Washington. Don't we know that? Washington, and it went to Washington, D.C., right? The march on Washington. This is also known as the Civil Rights Movement. Now, blacks will call colors, you remember colors, but it's either Negro, the Negroes, right, Negroes equals niggers. Now, niggers, today we say, today we say nigga, you know, nigga. The youths spun it a little bit, and now the youths say niggers. And they make this um, so-called racist, racist word a, a, a term of endearment. 
that's because of the lack of education. That's because of dreaming a lie. That's because of a lot of folly and 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 false teaching that has been told to this people. They've been believing many lies. And one of the biggest lies is this dream thing. And the dream is turning into a nightmare. Now, what we're about to read in Exodus is the spiritual template to what we are experiencing and what we are to experience in this time. This is the template. But as Jeremiah will tell us, because Jeremiah tells us about the dream, about the one who says, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, and it's supposed to be a past or a shepherd of the people, but is, is communicating a lie to the people and how the people will believe the lie and the consequences for such. But yet in the same book of Jeremiah, we find that there is a new um, fasica. Fasica is the Pesach. Pesach is the next holy day, major holy day for us as Hebrews or black Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrews, elect Rastafari, is the Passover time, which is known as Fasica. But now, it's also that Pesach time when the Beta Israel came out of Egypt. Now, in Jeremiah, it states to us that no longer shall they say, Jalib, Jalib, Yahai, Yahai, who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But in those days, in those times, speaking of our days and our times, it says, Ja live, Yahai, Yahai, who brought the children of Israel out of the north country and all of the countries which they have been scattered in. Now, this is only prophetically speaking of one particular people. This is another area which the so called European Jews, though they, you know, though they, they play around with this, but this is more. Speaking of, this, this is speaking of our people. But unfortunately, the pastors and the preachers have not spent the, the grace, the time of grace that we have been in for the last 40 years. They've been wandering in the wilderness of North America. So I want you to see the connection between Shemot, between Shemot, which is the Hebrew book of Exodus, and the names. We we're, were going to write some of the names, like we could say African American, uh, we, we could say colored, we could say coon, we could say nigger, we could say, um, there's so many different type of names that's for black folks. But the name that we're most known by, nigger or nigger or negro, is that very byword that we read prophetically. And when we read Deuteronomy chapter 20. 8 verses 15 to verse 68, and when you pay attention to 68, 68 shows us the curse, the, the, the ultimate for that curse of disobedience, and that is a returning into a type of Egypt in these latter days and times. Now, we are 400 plus years out from that particular moment, so yes, that is the past, but Prophetically and properly, we have to see the past, the present, and the future prophetically to really understand where we are. First of all, who we are, and where we are, why we're here, and what we can do about it, both firstly on the individual level and then on the collective level. This is why we think this, the, the book of Exodus is so important. We see that Exodus is really the key to those who will be the survivors, the black or otherwise the terufan, the survivors, and will be able to come out of this spiritual Egypt. Since there's a lot of talk right now about Africa, about um, so-called hip-hop and other artists and why black people don't invest, so forth and so on. This is part of, how can we say, this is like a Hail Mary in a sense. This is like a Hail Mary call. You know, the, the game is already so late. You know what I mean? We're, we're at such a point in time of prophetic revelations. Like, the only thing remains is the so-called fat lady to sing. You know, that's at the point we are at right now. However, there is mercy still with the Almighty because it could, it, it, it could all end right now. You see what I'm saying? It could all be over. You know, where there's life, there's hope. So there's still opportunity for us to study show also the proof, and to get prepared. That's the key thing right there, to get prepared. And if one is not prepared, then one won't make it. 
So we have to recognize its importance to these studies and these teachings as well. So the names. Now, names in the positive sense, in the positive sense, when we now read it in this area of the book of Exodus, a name refers to authority. A name refers to character. That's why it says to choose a good name is better than silver and gold, a good name. Uh, rappers and, and hip-hop artists and actors and other folks, they change their names. You understand, when they go into show business, they have a show business name. They don't, most of them don't go out there with their birth name, but they, they have another thing that they are called. So this is just to emphasize name and its multiple and the full context of how important a name is. It, it is our um, knowledge, we think about this, but we know it, that because many of the niggers and Negroes still hold on to slave masters' name, I mean, I mean, you know, even if they change a first name, like a makeup name, you know, like there's a lot of black makeup names, a part of this name and part of that name. Some of you may have these names, so forth and so on, but the name is firstly, foremostly important because the name is authority. Even in Christianity or in the Bible, when it says the name of Christos, the name of the Moshiach, the Moshiach, the name Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, how important that name, that character, even for us as Rastafari, identifying with Rastafari, that is very important. This is why we state, and we'll state it again, do not abbreviate the glory of that name. You know, people say Rasta, so for, and lots so called Rastafari, quote unquote, like to say Rasta, like it's a commercial product. Now, if one has a business and is dealing with business interests, you know, we're not you know, we haven't been made a judge over those things. What we're talking about is the glory, the authority, and the character of our Father, of our namesake, and therefore our character. If we do not take His name seriously, then who will take our name seriously? If we do not protect and defend that which belongs to Him, you understand, who will give us our own? And, and, and what right do we have? To, de to deserve even our own. It's, it's a point of responsibility. And now, the connection between these two is, first of all, Shemot is dealing with our ancestors, our ancient history. One can say the past. But it's not just history. There is, there is science to this. There is gnosis. There is gnosis. There is knowledge to this. And the scripture says that my people perish because of a lack of what? Money? No. Because of lack of knowledge. But if they believe that it's all about money, you understand, money is important. Let's not, you know, let's not make a mistake about it. Money within the system of things. You see what I'm saying? But we've got our priorities mixed up. It's like slick Willie Lynch. It's like how to make a slave. It's said to, to mix up the people. You understand? To, to reverse roles and do a lot of confusion. And this is exactly what we are presently dealing with. But here's the good news. The good news is that we know these things. So that means there is the opportunity if there be the willingness. That's why the Majesty teaches us to make our wills obedient to good influences. See, so it's a, at the heart of it for each of us, it's a personal thing. You know, beginning off, keely, what gets started, you have to... You have to deal with yourself, you understand, in the light of the gospel, in the light of the word. Because you have to recognize, well, I'm not perfect. I'm not as mature as I should be in these things. I need to be mature. I need to, in other words, biblically speaking, be perfect. How do I go about it? One has to take that responsibility, and that's nothing that we can say that can make somebody believe. This is not make-believe. This is that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But we say trust us on what we're saying, but know it for yourself. So, you see, if you're watching this and, and you're saying, I don't believe you on that, then why are you wasting your time? You, you silly, you stupid. Why are you wasting your time? You understand? If, 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 if you're saying whatever we're saying is incorrect, oh, you're just entertaining yourself? No, the joke is on you. You understand? If you are doing that, but... 
the lost sheep equals black Israel. Now, we have to qualify Israel because there's a lot of confusion in the world. The Bible even said that, you know, the Jews who call themselves Jews are not. And then it says that there'll be a next group of people that the Almighty will make the Jews bow down and recognize that, that God is in you and I have loved you. So we see that connection in this whole black Jewish thing, the black Jewish thing, you know, that people be talking about a lot. But we're in a spiritual Egypt, not just D.C. D.C. is the point of government. Now, we make a connection with D.C. and Pharaoh, Pharaoh, who's an a important part of this story. Now, a lot of folks say, we don't know the name of the Pharaoh. How come they didn't tell us the name of the Pharaoh? You know, that's a point. You understand? That? That's a point. Um, but how much do you know about ancient writings? You know, how much do you know about ancient writings? Do you know about um, 12th uh, century Egyptian literature? See, I ask that because just like today we use text messaging, we use a certain type of communication today that 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago folks didn't communicate in this way. The older folks think like the way young folks communicate is kind of retarded, it's kind of very abbreviated. You understand? Know it's like there's a, a, a consensus that you know what I'm talking about or you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't have time to explain it to you. That's the kind of um, perilous times, last Gentile days that we're living in right now. And the reason I point out the 12th century um, um, literature, there's an article out there, a series of articles. Look it up. It should still be online. Moses and 12th century um, um, literature. Moses or Moses in the 12th century literature. It, it, it's touching on some of um, um, Emmanuel Velikovsky's um, writings, a Russian scientist who had looked over ancient Egyptian documents in the Bible and then offered uh, a, a possible solution to the way the Bible can be properly um, synchronized and interpreted with what we know of the monuments, ancient Egypt, but in particular their literature. It's like today. A lot of things that we say, we say, in like, in the, like the Matrix is so known by everybody. If I quote a line from the Matrix, I don't have to say it was in the Matrix because most folks have seen it. But now if I wrote this down a thousand years from now, how would people identify with that? They'd be like, what is this? Oh, they might attribute it to me. While the proper context of it was I was using something familiar to every, to my listener. And my listeners understood it that I did not need to go into the background and, and the explanation. This is what we have in the Bible, and particularly now in the book of Exodus. And the next portion of this that we want to deal with um, as we move on from this. So the first part is the name, the name the names of the patriarchs. So there was an older generation that went down to Egypt. Just like we have right here, there was an older generation that went on the march on Washington, D.C., the spiritual Egypt. These Negroes, named niggers and Negroes, they went from Negroes and niggers to Afro and African American. Now some say, well, they went from that to black. Some say, I'm not an African American, I'm black, so black Americans. Now, Negro is from the Spanish and the Latin-based languages, which actually means black in itself. You know what I mean? So there's a difference between saying I'm black American or African American. Now, some niggas want to get deep in the system, get deep in the beast. They're like, forget all that hyphenating stuff. I'm just American. I'm as American as American pie. You know, what can we say? We shouldn't even get upset about those things. They basically told us who they are, and they are not of us. They are not for us. They are of a different, of a, of a different um, spirit. They're of a different, they could be your fan. but what if they're your family? What if they're your, your spouse? Or what if they're your children? What if they're people whom society tells you that you're supposed to do everything for them? First thing, be in the world and not of the world. Because as a Christian, and, and many people say they're Christians, and we, and we Christian, okay? they should be Christian, you understand? But many of the Christians, you understand, they say they're Christian, but according to Christ in the Bible, that most of these Christians don't even look at, Christ says that 
your enemies will be your, those of your, your foes will be those of your household. He said, if you love mother, father, son, daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. He says other things that seem to say that do, do, do for them. You understand? Do for them, love them. But when it comes to a conflict of your faith-based principle, and we talk about principles, because some of y'all are, are forever learning but not able to come to acknowledgement of the truth. The reason why I say that is because, you know, we get these communications from folks who say, I, I got a relative that be watching your channel, and I want to ask, do you believe this or that? Because this is what this relative says. And I, I have nothing against Selassie or Ethiopia. I, I'm, I'm interested in going on. I'm, you know, I like, I don't have a problem. But is this what you believe? Is this what you teach? I'm like, no, where do they get that from? And so we get to recognize that some are using this ministry, in a sense, as an excuse for their extra religious or religiosity. And please don't do that because you're hurting yourself and you're also hurting I and I. You understand? This is when we talk about obedience to the gospel. It's more than just hear, hearing the gospel is the first step. It's an obedience. It says to um, not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing, by the renewing of our mind. There is a, a, a growth that must go on within. One can put on dreadlocks. One can put on a talit or wear Meskel or Magen David, you know, or, or the Kana Bosom, you know, but what's going on on the inside, you see? And he says, judge a tree by its what? By its fruits. We judge the tree by its fruit. You may say, that's an apple tree, but get close, you see oranges. So it looked like maybe an apple, but it's a really an orange tree. So you judge the tree by its fruit. And when the Bible speaks that way, it's talking about our attitude, our character. This is all very important, but there's a spiritual process that you cannot run away from because we are in a spiritual Egypt. You see what I'm saying? And there is spiritual warfare, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, and we mentioned this book here. And the interesting thing is, between the spiritual warfare and, and the downpression, you know, certain signs of, of, of haters, you know, haters, Elatoch, Elatoch, that's the Amharic for enemies, but properly translated, that word means haters, the Elatoch. Now, this portion of Exodus, we're going to read about some Elatoch. We're going to read about some haters. But there was also a spiritual warfare going on there as well. Remember when Moses went to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. It wasn't just like doing it just physically. He, he didn't bring a bag of money. Or it, it wasn't, he had to use spiritual. There was, he, he used the, um, diplomacy. There was diplomacy that was used. You know, being able to deal. And he had to deal with the people in charge. He didn't say to the people, hey, you people, what's wrong with you? You understand? Because the people were so afflicted that they was ready for something better. Now, this is what's interesting, because we're in a period right now where people, if you, if, if you have your ears on the ground or to the streets, like we do, you, you, hear, you, you hear a lot of the brothers and sisters and the ones and ones out there telling you, yo, things getting hard out here, you know, things getting difficult out there. You know, dollars drying up, people wilding out because they don't got money. They can't pay off their house note, their car note. You understand? Um, they're, they're losing their, 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 their apartments or houses or, and, and losing their jobs, people losing their minds, so forth and so on. And then I began to put it together. Mm -hmm. Then I began to put it together. This particular Torah portion... Friday the 13th, you know what I mean? Friday the 13th, the 13th portion, the book of Exodus, Shemot, lost sheep, black Israel, spiritual Egypt, the march on Washington, D.C. was when our people, instead of coming out of Babylon, they went down to Egypt to ask Pharaoh, Pharaoh, which would mean the White House. And here's a little 
a bit of historical information. Did you know that in ancient Egypt, their main government um, building, some of the main government building in the translation would have been known as the White Walls. It was called the White Walls. Not White House. It's almost like White Walls in England is White Hall, so forth and so on. But that was known as the White Walls. So this is where Pharaoh represented the government as well as the individual. And here's what's very interesting when you're studying the Bible here. If you really read and you pay attention, you notice that sometimes it seems to have the, the spirit. You see, you have to read it with the spirit. You have to really read it in the spirit. You know, and hopefully you have to ask the Almighty to give you your imagination that, that, that the devil's system and their cartoons and their lies have taken away so you can begin to see it in your mind's eye. You can recognize that some places it's not one individual speaking as Pharaoh. You know what I mean? It's like when Obama says something, he uh, makes some decision. It's not just him sitting down, scratching his head and saying, oh, I'm going to do this because he's not king. He can't do it like that. He has to go through the White House and everything that's connected with it. So the same idea should be borne in mind when we look at this present spiritual Egypt. But now, here's the key. The key here is the first portion of what we find is the affliction in Egypt. I would listen to um, um, Inubia's um, Jai Kebra Neges, the music that we was playing earlier. Let me show this album, and if you, I don't know what they're doing with their music, if they're still out there, they should still be out there, at least their music out there. Get a copy of this. It's some, you know, Inubia, or Inubia, right? Just try to get a copy of it. Check it out. Um, they said something in the lyric. They said something about affliction for all the for all their addictions or affliction for their addictions. And I picked up on that. I was like, wow. You know, seeing the fact that I was studying here about the affliction in Egypt. The affliction for their what? Addictions. Wow. Remember the Israelites went down there just like the Negro the Negro leaders and the Negro people, they went down to DC. Many of them got good government jobs, you know what I mean? Remember, that was the whole thing back in the days. Get a good government job and you be set for life and you can retire early and you can go to Florida. and You know, that, that was the whole narrative of that. But all oh, that's changing now. People talking about, well, well, we got entitlements because they went down to Egypt like the, the children of Israel also went down to Egypt. They were fruitful. They had a lot of children. You know, that's what they tell them black folks. Black people got too many children. That's what the system is. And then they bring on the eugenics and, and Planned Parenthood. Now, in connection with Obama, the 1260 uh, days, when he met with Pope Benedict, what they say the Pope discussed with him was the abortion thing. You know, because the Catholic Church still has a a policy, you understand, that they are against abortion, and somehow some pamphlet was given to him, too, about the Pope's policy, and allegedly, according to the news, the Pope, like, um, um, remonished or admonished him, say, you know, on this abortion thing, like, you're doing too much right there. Now, however that was, it's interesting, because from what I hear, Obama is increasing the abortion thing. And we know that black people, by a lot of videos and other testimonies out there, have been unduly um, targeted through this seeming woman's choice thing, have been targeted. And a lot of folks can't really see the big picture. Now, in this Torah portion, we read about um, Shifra and Pua. They were midwives, and they were told to kill the sons and to save alive the daughters. I mean, this too is so near and connected. Now, when have you heard a so-called black preacher up in the church saying, "Brothers and sisters, we want to deal with, we want to deal with uh, um, the Book of Exodus"? And you know, uh, saints, we are just like the Israelites were. What's interesting, you have other races that had no knowledge of Christianity that become Christian. They see in the Israelite stories some some resemblance 
or some echoing of their experience or their tribulation, therefore they can derive faith from it. But not our so-called Negro pastors and preachers. They're all about how you tithe it. You know, saying how much you do, do you really make that much money? That's all you're gonna get. You know, that that's what they're dealing with on that sort of level. But we should have known about that since the time of Martin Luther for, um, uh, King Jr. We should have known. Yeah, I know I'm saying Lucifer because he was a light, but a light, a, a different sort of light, a very confusing sort of light too. When you listen to that speech, I have a dream speech. Try to connect the two strands. He's saying that we get more money, we'll be able to buy our integration and assimilation with white society. So it shouldn't surprise us now if we see the young girls and, and even some of the young boys, too, with the blonde wig and the, the blonde in their hair and all this kind of crazy stuff. That's just one overt example. There's a lot of other crazy stuff. And we blame them. We say it's these children... They're only doing what they've seen the generation before do and trying to do it better with what they have to work with. As Brother Cyrus from said, he said, why don't all these older folks start a corporation and hire the youths? White folks do it, Asians do it, even the Hispanics, many of them do it for their peoples, but not the lost sheep. So when we read through the Bible on the lost sheep, and on Israel, when Israel goes astray, there's only one people and one people only that fit the bill to a proverbial T, to the cross of the crucifixion of our black Lord and Savior. Black folks, niggas, fit the bill. So there's much we can learn from this, both about where we're at, how we got in this, what we can do. See, this is the key, what we can do about it. In other words, now that we find the love of Jah in the revelation, you understand, of the half of the story we didn't know, now what are we going to do that we found the love of Jah? Now that we're not lost as we were lost before, we didn't even have the slightest inkling. And what's so interesting is this. Have you noticed this, brothers and sisters, that when you start to learn about some things going on and you speak to some folks about it who never talk any of that real consciousness stuff, they always say, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, like they, they know about it. And you, you wonder, like, wow, yo, dude, how long you knew about this? You knew about this? <laughs> so you find that some folks already know about what's going on. You know, like when we're finding out about the, the, the NAACP, the civil rights, the nine black uh, boule fraternities, and you're like, wow, how are the, you know... Hate is increased. Nina bezel. You know, how are they how, how are they so increased? But there's hope. There's good news in this story because the first chapter now is laying down Israel and Egypt, and it was Negroes in DC, Negroes in the federal government, Negroes in the system. That's another way of updating that so we can see the resonance in our time. The Egyptian bondage. You understand now you have to overstand this. Some say that that 400 years was Israel then, but every good student and scholar of the Bible has said, no, the 400 years must be speaking of something future because of all of the other details of the prophecy. That 400 years is not the particular 400 years that we find here. It was 430 years, but that was not the particular 400 years that was spoken of to Abraham. There's, there's a couple of key significant um, facts and factors that when you, if you really want to get into some of the details about that. We want, we want to lay that down. That the bondage is like the bondage we're in right now. And what kind of bondage is it? The answer is right there on the board. It's a spiritual. It's a spiritual bondage. That's why there is so much spiritual warfare, you understand, for those who want to get out. You see, if you want to get out of it, if you start to recognize in your mind what's really going on, and you start to recognize the good news of the King of Kings and His Christ and the reality of this world and everything, but, but you're already, you know, kind of deeply into it because, you, you know, the Holy Spirit found you where you was at. But you would notice that there's a, a, a warfare. It's not like you can just 
almost like you're in the gang. You can't just leave the gang just like that. The gang ain't going to let you just, okay, you retire. You know what I mean? No, they ain't going to do that. You know, there's a spiritual warfare to get out. So some might notice that as soon as they start to get um, conscious or recognize things and, and start to make those baby steps, that there's a lot of warfare. There's a lot of difficulty. There's a lot of even spiritual warfare that's coming at them. This is why we think it's our responsibility to, to, to preach and proclaim this to warn ones. Because, see, in some Christian, Christian, not Christian, but some Christian churches, they tell people just come to the Lord and, and say the sinner's prayer and everything is wonderful. It's up and up and up and up. Maybe in, in, in counterfeit Christianity, the grace, the, in pretentious Christianity, it's like that. But in the sincerity, when you have to face things head on, straight on, as they are, especially for our people, we recognize at a deeper level of knowledge and awareness because we as a people have a deeper history. You know, we have a deeper history than the Gentiles. The Almighty can't afford to show some light on some of the Gentiles and Gentile-minded Negroes. But those of us who recognize the truth, you know, like we are responsible for what we know. You know, we are responsible for what we know. It's not good enough to have the knowledge about it and not try or attempt to act righteously on that knowledge and accordingly. So the first levels is really beginning in our, 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 our heads and our hearts. You see, that's, that's the first level, really coming to the transformation of the mind is really important. Because even that Nas and Pharaoh interview about performing in Africa, and, you know, they're talking about the horror story, but you don't hear any um, 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 faith. You know, I mean, personal faith, is like confidence, cock, I can do it, I, I'm such and so and so. But you don't really hear, there's not that, there's not that spiritual guidance and protection. It's basically still in, it's systemic. It's still basically in spiritual Egypt. And it's all a part of the march where the Israelites w went down to Egypt, how we went down. Now, this is not 430 years, but it's been what, 40 years? Exactly how long has it been? 40, 42, 43 years? How long has this going down. Wouldn't it be interesting if it was 430 years for the Israelites in Egypt, if it's not since the civil rights movement, which is a type of going down to Egypt, if it's not that same number of years uh, uh, except for the hundreds, so if it's not 430, it's like 43 or so years. Who really knows about it? We'll check it out for ourselves. Now, the next portion of this, so we have in this one chapter, there's three major themes. We have Israel or Jacob and the patriarchs in Egypt because who went down to, to D.C.? It was our, our parents. If it wasn't them, there was people like them. It was their generation that went down to Egypt to get a good government job and to rely on Pharaoh, to rely on the federal government, to rely on the Pharaoh or the federal government. You understand? And a lot of that has been reversed. Even Reagan fourth shadow of reversing, a flipping of that script. Then we have the Egyptian bondage, and connected in the Egyptian bondage, right, or the harsh treatment for succeeding in the system. You see, the Israelites succeeded in that system when they went down there. And also because of what Joseph did, so forth and so on, which is a very interesting aspect. You learn a lot of economics, you learn a whole lot about economics. I'm talking about business. There's more business in the Bible, you understand, and all types of interesting things that a lot of folks, when they read it, and the teachers or preachers that, 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 that shepherd them, they don't know it, so how can they tell and put their congregation onto it? But then the next point about the bondage is the killing of the men, the men and the male children. Now, need we go in to the fact that there's been a war against black males or black male, a war on black males in America, whether it's the prison industrial complex, um, whether it's the grade killing them off, when they ch whether it's the miseducation, 
or the various other forms of abuse. Now, all these things are systemic. See, here's what we need to understand. Though there's individuals involved and individuals have individual responsibility, there is such an overarching system that people ignore. They say, forget about the system of things. Everybody got to pull their, up their bootstraps. Okay, yeah, everyone got to pull up their bootstraps, but if the government is pulling down your pants, then what does it, okay, so your bootstraps are up, but your pants are down. So, I mean, I mean, you still are naked. You still are exposed. And this is the situation or the situation we're in. So now here we see that there's a king of Egypt. Have you noticed that this king of Egypt is not called Pharaoh? He is called Sutin. He's a Sutin Ba or a Sutin Re. Mm -hmm. He's called a king. Have you noticed that in, in Genesis chapter 1, that it continually mentioned the king of Egypt, the king of Egypt, the king of Egypt? Now, these, this king of Egypt was uh, Hyksos. This king of Egypt was one of the Edomites. These are the Edomites. This is the interesting thing about this part of the story right here for, for, the, for those who want to understand it historically. Some people say that the Israelites were the Hyksos and the Hyksos were the Israelites. The reason why they confuse the two groups so much is because, remember, that we have Jacob and we have Esau. Now, if you read in the Bible, the Bible says that the, that the Edomites had, 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 had duped them, duped them like they were dukes before the Israelites, and they had kingship, they had, they had monarchical order before the children of Israel had their first king. And the first king of the Beit Israel was Shaul, or Saul. Saul was the first king of, of Israel. Now, the Edomites and the Hyksos, and even to a degree the Amalekites, they, 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 they are confederate peoples. So now what we have in Genesis, you understand, with these two brothers. Now notice what we have here. We have two brothers. Two brothers who, according to the scripture, have the same physical father and physical mother. But these two brothers are as different, in a sense, as day and night. These two brothers, the Edomites and the Israelites. Now, many blame the Israelites, I mean, blame, blame the, the Egyptians. Because it says, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Because the Edomites were able to successfully, you understand, interpose their will and to make alliances with certain Egyptians, pointing out their brothers as the enemy in order to gain favor themselves in the civilization, as it were. I mean, we can look at this even today. Some of this we see in certain interesting ways among black folks or even blacks and Latinos we, and among different types of Hispanics and each other where we will say they're all Hispanic, but amongst themselves they have differences. Others will say we're all black, but among each other there's some differences. And sometimes it comes down to these people coming out of the same family. This is what makes it interesting and also opens us up to really see the, the clearer context of it. So when we're looking at the scripture, we're seeing reality, no fantasy. So we can recognize that even in Africa or Europe, Europe had the same thing, in Asia it's the same way. In India, the, the Hindus and the, and the, and the Mohammedans, the, the Muslims, they be having their strife. Yet many of them are relative peoples. You understand? Are, are, are related peoples. So just because people call all of us niggas, and we all may be black, you understand, as my Nana said, you may be my color, but you're not my kind. And this is the interesting thing that we're learning here. In addition to, I think it's uh, Zachariah, um, is, it, is, is it Zachariah that says that, um, um, no, it's not Zachariah, that says my people went down to, 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 to Egypt and the Assyrians persecuted them there. There's that verse in the scripture which points out that it was the Assyrians. We touched on it in another video. Because there's a lot of 
notes. We're trying to give certain ones notes. So ones can't take down some of these notes. Just write them down. It might not have time to get into it right then, but just note them down. And then when one gets opportunity, check some of them out. Go go search some things on the internet. You'll find a lot. Of Holy Spirit, may the Holy Spirit of the King Kingdoms Christ guide you, because it's really we need that spiritual. We have to recognize that a large part of our captivity as a people is spiritual as well. And we do have spiritual authority in the name of Yeshua. You see, we have spiritual authority. A lot of us just think, okay, Christ is an example for us, exemplary example of way to live. Yes, but also there is spiritual authority that we have because we don't just fight as others fight fleshly, but we have spiritual weaponry. There's spiritual authority that we can command to work on our behalf. So when we hear about the Satanists and their rituals and their groves and everything else, we have something to protect us as well as to use as a defensive and even sometimes when necessary as an offensive weapon. So we cannot just look at this as just physical, this, this, this warfare, this experience that we are going through as human beings in this time. It's not just a physical experience. I think no doubt people should recognize there's psychological and there's also the spiritual aspects that need to be considered. Now, the next portion of this we want to touch on is who are these unnamed people? The unnamed pharaohs, the unnamed Egyptians. In the next portion of this, we'll call that portion um, uh, Ethiopic Reconstruction of of Egypt and the Exodus, something to that effect. Um, where we'll go, what we're going to seek to do is to put it in the nearest and most approximate time range and the, use the monuments in ancient Egyptian history to show the most likely time that the Exodus as a historical event. Some would say that it didn't happen historically, it's all mythologically. No. We disagree with Macy there, but we understand Macy's perspective was he was speaking to the Europeans and their madness, their whitewashing of it, trying to whitewash these characters as white folks. If you read Macy carefully enough, he basically says if it ever took place, if it ever was Israelites, whatever, these were these black Ethiopian Hebrew people, basically is what he said. If it did ever happen in that way, but one thing that's clear is that we can see from the mythological archetypes how that connects with the Bible. But as far as the European madness, it's all a lie, and I can't believe these other white guys who sold knowledge of these to be racist. This is what Macy basically said in some of his works, and currently we have um, um, a, a book of the beginnings, volume one and volume two, available. So, we're going to prove and seek to prove the historical reconstruction of ancient Egypt and get the time period and find out who was, you know, find out who was the, the pharaoh, the pharaoh that killed the Hebrew male children. You understand? Who was pharaoh's daughter who adopted Moses or Musa? You understand? Who was the pharaoh that under which Moses fled when Moses fled to Median, the holy land of the Medianites, who was, or Medina, as, as, as it's known today, who was that Pharaoh? Who was that particular Pharaoh? And chiefly, who was the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of and at the time of the Exodus? In addition, we're going to touch on who was the firstborn who, who died. Remember the firstborn of, of Egypt. Who was that particular firstborn and what sort of proof there exists to actually prove that the Bible is not only perfect mythology or in the mythological, mystical archetypes, but also it's accurate history, but it must be understood Ethiopically or from a Afro-Asian, a black perspective. If you try to understand it in, from Hollywood, all you're going to get is special effects and drama, but not the truth. So, my brothers and sisters, a little bit more to come on this. This is just to go over Shimon again, and within um, about a 24-hour or so period, y'all willing, we should have the next um, 
Torah portion reading and feeding or or Vayera Tegelet um, Tegelet Tegelet um, which is a revelation as well as more revelation to this and there's applications that when we study this it can help prepare our hearts and minds for both the affliction of the addictions you see because a lot of folks addiction is material materialism and their spirit their soul they sold their soul they sold their feeling and emotion into these physical things and material things and now we're living in a particular economic bondage and affliction it's not because money there's no wealth out there but the paradigm of wealth is controlled and is being manipulated partially for these very effects but the Almighty is working through these things as well he's going to overcome man's design to steer the the river like the river of the river now to change the proverbial direction to go in the route for our benefit so stay tuned for that that is coming up um hopefully shortly my brothers and sisters so until then shalom rastafari and we love the brotherhood love ja and love and honor and honor the brotherhood shalom <laughs>